regarding the new cabinets yeah. that, that we are making in Germany, we are using different corner connections mm -hmm. and a different uh, baffle to side baffle, front baffle to side baffle co connection. Right. Uh, and the way we do this, uh, the, we connect it, is a, a tongue and groove connection, okay. uh, which um, can transport the frequencies through those corners and from the baffle to the side baffle uh, much more uh, e much easier much right. easier and uh, you will have a more three-dimensional tone mm. at least. Is it more direct as well do you think? Uh, I right. don't think it's more direct uh, it doesn't lose right. mm -hmm. directness it doesn't okay. lose directness but it's getting a bit warmer bottom end mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're coming out more mid free mid frequencies overtones right yeah it, it sounds more balanced okay more like a balanced cabinet yeah and but but the difference is uh, slight is slightly different it's not okay. that it's a completely different cabinet i mean if you compare <laughs> it you you heard it it's yes. it's yeah. just making yeah. some things a bit different yeah. and better again it's the the nuances yeah, <laughs> yeah. yes the passion the striving for the 100% yeah. agree yes yeah. Yeah. yes yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that um, well, we've put or you put to be more precise mm. uh, the G12K speakers in my old cabinet. So this is uh, old construction. Yeah, um, but the the it still makes a big difference yeah. having the new speakers in there for my sound. But I think you'd also mentioned that this is also made of a different wood than the new ones, isn't it? This one, yeah, this is one uh, uh, so of the early. In 2001, uh, this is 2001, yeah, yeah, this one was made in my garage um, <laughs> uh, when my daughter was uh, four years old and I had to work in the garage because we were using Patex, which is uh, air pollution big time, right. so I had to leave the house to wrap the cabinets <laughs> in my garage, winter time. <laughs> yeah, so not even Mesa Boogie started in the garage. It was, yeah. I think everybody started in the garage. Yeah. Every amp supplier, every amp manufacturer started yeah. in the garage one day. <laughs> it was in first time it was in first time it was a passion, and then yes. years later we made a li living out of it. Yeah. Years later, decades. Of <laughs> uh, um, well, and uh, this um, this is made of okume and poplar mix. Oh, that's what yeah. you were saying earlier, right? And then um, we had. We took a decision to outsource the production to America right. because um, there was we had more success over in America than we had in Europe, mm -hmm. and it was simply not possible to ship the cabinets with air freight, right. and uh, the quantity was not big enough to uh, to load a container and ship it. Right. Also, it was uh, there. There have been a time gap of 90 to 120 days to get. Uh, back the investment, so it uh, was. Uh, yeah. We had a very small, uh, which we still have. We had a very small, um, growing American distributor, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he didn't have the funds to finance this, and we didn't have it either. So um, we said, well, if we outsource the production to America, uh, it will be uh, more efficient, more efficient to do that. And then we sorted out uh, which kind of material is available in America, and um, we got back to me and said, "Well, we don't have this uh, African wood. Mm -hmm. uh, we have poplar only." And uh, I, I made some samples with poplar, and I thought, "Well, um, it's it's very similar. It's right. very similar." And uh, then uh, we decided to go with poplar in uh, regarding the American production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. We started and uh, business was growing and then we started uh, bringing container from America to Germany because the production was American. Yeah. Yeah, and this uh, happened in 2003, 2003. And uh, we stopped doing that outsourcing procedure in 2007. Right. And now we have, uh, we had good business and we could buy a CNC machine and uh, we set up a new cabinet factory at my place yeah. and uh, I spent six months programming the CNC and doing again research with the cabinet and this is the result is the that, result, that yeah. uh, uh, tongue and groove uh, thing it, it's not possible to do it with small tools 
Just yeah. for the non-woodworkers amongst yeah. us, could, like, you, could you just explain what a tongue and groove is? <laughs> tongue and groove is uh, um, the, the tr traditional way of um, fixing two baffles is uh, that way, with a glue. Tongue and groove means you make a groove on one side of the baffle uh -huh. and a tongue on the one that coming okay. in, in a 90 degrees angle. Right. And you have more, at least you have uh, more space for the glue and for the frequency as if you're doing it straight. Right. So you have, uh, if, you, if you're if um, you fixing two plates or two sheets with uh, like 18 millimeters, you have 18 millimeters of glue. If you're doing that uh, tongue growth thing, you have, uh, if it's an 8 millimeter tongue, you have, um, and it's 8 millimeter deep, it's 8 and 8 and 8 and another 11. Right. Which is uh, a big difference. Yeah. Which is a big difference. Yeah. And we do it um, there at the corner connections. Mm -hmm. I will do some photos in the factory yeah. next week. And I'll try and I'll try and splice them into the video at yeah. the appropriate points, but uh, yeah. if not I'll put a link up to where yes. the, everyone can find yeah. them and see them. <laughs> and uh, also the front baffle uh, is fixed to the side baffles with uh, that tongue and groove. Okay. Yeah. system yeah. and this is uh, the only difference to the old cabinets but it's a uh, it's really one step beyond yeah yeah a small step but <laughs> we always try to work on never we never sit still and think no. well we we have the best cabinet <laughs> now uh, we we, do, we always do research even yeah. if we wouldn't do business we, we would do yeah. research because it's fun big time and uh, <laughs> That's why you got into it in the first yes, place. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I worked in a bank when I was 18, and uh, for my life I found out, no, that's not yeah. what I, I'd rather get no money and do what I, I have to survive. That was what I, I have to survive yeah. and try to make something good yeah. that is interesting for my life and for my way of uh, playing music. So music is, music is my first love. <laughs>